Hey folks, this is Kalani. Torghast is changing once again, but not like the minor changes we've seen before. This time the system is being turned upside down and inside out. Torghast will be almost a completely different system when patch 9.1 arrives. So let's check out all of the changes and why this might be the start of Torghast actually being fun. First things first, there will be no death counter or limit or whatever you want to call it. You can die as many times as you want or need to in a Torghast run and still complete it and still earn the maximum Soul Ash reward. That means the Taragru will never pop up again in Torghast to chase you down, so enjoy it while it still lasts. This means that you can always, and I mean always, complete a Torghast run that you start. So for anyone who was majorly put off by getting to the last boss on the last floor and then dying and losing all the time spent in that Torghast run with absolutely zero reward, that cannot happen in patch 9.1 so you don't have to worry about it anymore. What you will have to worry about, at least a little bit, is the new scoring system. When you finish a Torghast run by killing the last boss, your performance will be ranked with a new star or gem system. They look kind of like gems, so let's roll with that for now. The maximum score is 5 gems, and pretty much everything in your run will affect your score. You can get a neat little breakdown at the end of your run too. You can see that the three major contributing factors here are completion percentage. This includes things like killing monsters, breaking jars, collecting phantasma, saving NPCs and rescuing souls, completing puzzles, you know, pretty much everything there is to do in a Torghast run. Then we have time taken. So you're going to get more points for completing your run faster by the looks of things. But I think this won't be as much of a factor as players might initially expect. You'll notice that there is a part time value here as well. Well, so maybe as long as your time is below that limit, you'll receive the 50 points for beating the timer. I'm not too sure yet. We're going to have to run a lot more Torghast to see how the runs match up. Then you also get points for the amount of time you are in a hot streak. 43% uptime on that hot streak gave me 23 points. I'll talk more about the hot streak in just a moment. But you can see I got most of my points in this run from completion. So the more stuff you kill and the more floors you clear out entirely, the better you're going to do. So the answer here isn't going to blast through the run as quickly as possible if your goal is to get more gems in the end of your run score. But I guess that will still work out if all you want is your Soul Ash. No matter how many gems you get at the end, no matter what your score may be, you will always receive the full Soul Ash reward for that Torghast layer as long as you kill the boss. Deaths will knock off some of your points for your end score too, so while a lot of deaths won't kill your Torghast run entirely, it can reduce your score quite significantly. So, what about that hot streak thing we were talking about? The hot streak meter is a pretty standard hot streak system you might see in other games. When you do something that earns completion points, the bar starts to fill up. This includes killing monsters, killing rares, rescuing souls, completing NPC quests, destroying jars, pretty much anything that involves you working your way through Torghast. If you fill up the bar about two thirds of the way, it looks like you can kind of see the marker here. The UI definitely isn't finished though so it's hard to see sometimes but if you fill the bar up enough you become empowered remember this buff it's going to be very important for a variety of reasons later while you are empowered you gain a movement speed boost and you get some free haste the faster you go and the more you clear out the longer you will stay empowered and in that hot streak state so the more points you get at the end various systems also buff up the empowered state so it's going to be in your best interest to stay empowered as much as possible throughout your Torghast run before we move on to the other major systems updates, there are a few quality of life changes as well. The last boss can now be found on floor 5 instead of floor 6. This makes every single Torghast run one floor shorter, which should save you a lot of time if you're running through Torghast multiple times for whatever reason. The last boss on floor 5 will no longer heal itself if you are killed by it as well. So as long as you can consistently chip away at the boss's health, it doesn't really matter how many times you die now, you will eventually kill the Boss, so you can loot your soul ash or soul cinders. Yes, you heard me right, Soul Cinders. There will be a new currency added to the higher layers of Torghast, which will be needed to upgrade your legendary gear to rank 5 and rank 6. Soul Cinders only drop from the new layers, which are layers 9 through 12, and while you can earn all of a layer's Soul Ash and Soul Cinders rewards just by killing the last boss and completing the layer, 
that might not be enough to unlock the next layer up. To unlock a higher layer, you now need to complete the previous layer and achieve a score of four gems or higher. So if you're running layer eight and you only get three gems at the end, you're going to have to run it again until you are able to earn those four gems to unlock layer nine and continue onwards. The same goes for unlocking layer 10, 11 and 12. You have to get 4 gems in the previous layer to be able to progress. So you might find yourself running the same layer multiple times now, which is definitely going to be a different experience because you won't have any additional soul ash or soul cinders to look forward to. But that doesn't mean there's no reward at all. A new currency is being introduced for Torghast called Tower Knowledge. At least that's what it's called on the PTR right now. The name could change. Every Torghast run you do, even if you've earned all of your Soul Ash for the week, will reward you with some Tower Knowledge. You can endlessly grind this stuff. The higher the score you get at the end, the more knowledge you get in your run, so that score really is going to be important for all things Torghast. You can use this tower knowledge currency to unlock talents or traits in a whole new Torghast only talent tree. To access this talent tree, you need to find a broker inside a Torghast run and pick up his quest to return the box of many things to the rune carver. After you've done that, you can find the box of many things right next to our good old friend the rune carver in his room, and you can spend your hard earned tower knowledge to empower yourself for future Torghast runs. There's a lot of talents you can work towards, and it looks like you can eventually earn everything on this list. To progress down the tree, you just need to spend tower knowledge and unlock some perks, so the more Torghast runs you do, the more knowledge you can earn, the more talents you can unlock, and the easier your future Torghast runs will be. So duplicate runs that don't earn Soul Ash aren't entirely wasted, you will always earn tower knowledge to unlock some more perks. Let's quickly go through the talents we have to preview at the moment. The Blessing of the Ancients will let you begin each Torghast run with one blessing. If you put more points into it, you get two blessings and then three blessings. Blessings are kind of the opposite of Torments. They exist to help you in one form or another. The active blessings change every day, so it should hopefully keep things a little bit more interesting. They can increase the effectiveness of Soul Remnant, give you access to additional speed boosts or buffs, or let you one-shot a few elites. I'm excited to see what else they can come up with. Empowered Swiftness increases the movement speed bonus and haste bonus of the Empowered buff quite significantly. Efficient Looter lets you auto-loot any non-boss corpse when you kill it. This sounds really nice, but right now the looting actually interrupts your current cast, which is incredibly annoying. Hopefully that will be fixed by the time this goes live. I made sure to file a bug report on that one. Freed from Torment reduces the number of torments in your run by 1 and 2 when you can max it out. This will make a lot more sense a bit later in the video. Empowered Perseverance reduces the speed at which your Empowered Hot Streak bar decays. That's going to help increase your end of run score for sure, staying in Hot Streak for longer. Discovered Cash is a very interesting one. Each run, Broker Merchants will have two of the following rare anima powers available for purchase. All of these improve the Empowered buff. You can be immune to fear. Your jumps can deal damage to nearby enemies. You can increase the amount of Phantasma dropped. You can heal while out of combat. Or you can improve the Broker's potions. This talent also has three ranks, but I'm not sure if that's intended. Unfettered, you take reduced damage from bosses up to 25%. That's going to be huge for anyone who struggles with boss fights in general. Then we also have the Adamant Vaults. This is a very interesting talent option because the Adamant Vaults were supposed to be a new Torghast wing we can explore. I guess we'll have to progress in Torghast to earn the right to enter this wing and it's going to be for layers 9 or above only. Inexplicable power. When you engage a boss, your damage is increased for 20 seconds. This could also be up to 25%, so nuking bosses is going to be even easier. Enduring Souls causes Soul Remnants to grant you 1% stamina, as well as primary stat. Very nice for any long runs. Good Reflexes. You take reduced damage from traps. Here's one for the chaps who always seem to be walking into dangerous things. Death Denied. When you die, there's a chance it will not count against you. That's going to be nice for all of the score hunters out there. Unflinching. You take reduced damage from elites. I wish this power were a bit higher. That is going to be an instant lock-in from me. The Anima Plunderer. The 10th enemy killed drops an Anima Cell. 
Now, it's not every 10th enemy you kill, or just the first 10th enemy you kill. This one has multiple ranks too. I hope this helps open the floodgates for more anima powers. That would be awesome. Elite Slayer. Elites award additional value to the empowered bar. Making elites worth more is great. It's a shame it's a talent point though. And down at the bottom, Medal with Fate is currently marked as under construction, but right now it reads, up to one time per run, you may reject an anima power selection and obtain a replacement set of choices. Very interesting. If you get super bad anima powers, you might have the option to re-roll them and pick from a whole new set of completely bad anima powers. I can't wait. And the very last point in this tree, while empowered you gain 15% damage and healing. That is going to be massive, tied in with everything else, and I wouldn't be surprised if players are zooming through Torghast when they manage to unlock everything in this tree. That's all for the talent tree, but there is another huge change to the Torghast system as a whole, and that's to Torments. All of the Torments that you've seen so far and have played around with in Torghast are gone. Gone completely, torments are no longer specific to the wing you are running, and they don't really scale as your run progresses, so the constant fire damage over time that increases as you go up floors, gone. Or the increased health on monsters that increases every floor you climb, they're all gone. In their place are new torments. The new torments kind of work like affixes from Mythic Plus Dungeons now. You can have multiple active at the same time, and how many torments you have to deal with will depend on your layer level. Layers 1 through 5 have zero torments active, so they're going to be walks in the park compared to the higher runs. Layers 6 and 7 will have one torment active, so that's where you start seeing them for the first time. Layers 8 and 9 will have two torments. Layer 10 will have three torments. Layer 11 will have four torments and layer 12 will have five torments total. Those talents that we looked at earlier that remove torments from a run suddenly seem so much more enticing, right? Wait until you see what some of these actually do. The torments active will change every day apparently, so even if you have five torments active on layer 12, if you run it on different days you will see different torments. I think that's probably a good thing, that means we don't get stuck with a bad set of torments for the entire week, like we can get stuck with a bad set of affixes for Mythic Plus for the entire week. We've only seen a few of these torments first hand on the PTR, but we have a more complete list that has been data mined, so let's go through the new torments as well. Terminal. Maximum health reduced by 1% every 60 seconds. This effect is reset on floor completion. This sounds terrible, and is the kind of negative effect I think the dev team should avoid entirely. Making a run more difficult the longer you take isn't going to make anyone enjoy Torghast anymore, so why do they keep trying to push these kind of things? There's also supernatural power. Unnatural power is significantly stronger. That's the debuff that elites get over time, right? So the elites are going to get even stronger the longer you take to kill them. That's not going to be pleasant to deal with. Twisted Magic. Magic damage done increased by 15% for all players and enemies. This is something I can get behind a bit more at least. You're going to take more magic damage, but you're also going to deal more magic damage. It's something you can work around and play with. Well, unless you don't deal any magic damage, I guess. But that's why there's Twisted Strength. Physical damage done increased by 15% for all enemies and players. The same thing, but for the chaps who swing big swords around to deal their damage. There's also Volatile Doom. Enemies have a chance to leave a doomed soul remnant on death. After a brief delay, it explodes, dealing shadow damage immediately and over 10 seconds to nearby players. This one doesn't sound too bad to avoid, providing you keep moving anyway. I would have loved to see this ability also hit the monsters too though, so you can benefit from exploiting the torment. Avenger. Enemies grant nearby allies increased haste on death. Something else to consider and play around with, this could end up being incredibly deadly if you kill too many monsters on top of a big elite or on top of a boss. Hopefully the haste increase isn't too high. Claustrophobic. When 5 or more enemies are within 10 yards of you, they deal 10% increased damage. This one isn't too bad either, and it gives you a few options to play around it, trying to stay at ranged if you can, or make sure you beef up on defense to withstand that extra 10% damage as a melee. There's also Thanatophobia. When brought below 40% of your max health, become horrified for 3 seconds. This effect can only occur every 2 minutes. 
That sounds awful. Basically, if you get into a bit of a pickle and you go too low on health, make it much worse by CCing you for 3 seconds. I don't see any redeeming factor for this ability. It just seems to exist to kick you while you're down or to try and scare you from pulling too much or too fast. This is also going to be much easier to play around as a ranged DPS when compared to a melee DPS. So honestly, I think they should remove this one. It doesn't add anything, but could end up being extremely punishing, especially for lower skilled players. The next one is Reinforced Doom Conduits. Elite enemies periodically summon Doom Conduits while in combat. I've seen these things, they're like the arcane enchanted affix from Diablo 3. They're little black orb things that have a laser that rotates. They hit like a truck too and they spawn quite often. They're not the worst torment on the list but they're definitely going to kill a lot of players. Reinforced Reflective. Elite enemies periodically gain a reflective shield while in combat, reflecting all incoming spells for 5 seconds. This is another torment that is going to be quite frustrating, mainly because there doesn't seem to be any counterplay here, and it's going to vary wildly with its effectiveness. If you're a spellcaster, you just have to do nothing for 5 seconds every time this comes up, or you're going to kill yourself. If you aren't a spellcaster, you just don't care about it. I guess that's that's going to encourage players to group up a bit more maybe to avoid these kind of specific penalties, but it's going to be painful either way. The next one is Reinforced Unstoppable. Elite enemies resist the first stun or interrupt use against them. I guess this doesn't really matter all too much unless it's a really painful ability, but it's going to make elites a little harder to deal with, especially if you're playing by yourself, and especially if you have a really long cooldown on your only interrupt. Can you imagine having a minute interrupt? It's just not worth using. The first time you use it, they're going to be immune to it, and chances are you've probably killed the elite within the next minute. Well that's going to be fun, isn't it? Then we also have Reinforced Commanding. Elite enemies grant nearby non-elite enemies increased health and reduced damage taken. So what I'm getting from this is let's make elites as annoying as possible so everyone just avoids killing them or avoids doing Torghast on the days with these Reinforced Torments. Definitely seems like at least part of the plan right now with these Torments. There's also Hardened. Non-elite enemies have 50% increased health. Increased health on trash monsters isn't interesting, it's boring. It only exists to slow you down, which is going to be even more impactful with the hot streak system in place. Please try and do something a little more creative. We have Raging. You can probably guess this one if you've ever done a Mythic Plus dungeon. When non-boss enemies are brought below 30% health, they gain 50% increased damage. Some of these torments are going to stack together and create all sorts of problems, aren't they? Then we also have Backup. Torghast bosses are granted a powerful ally to assist them in battle. I guess they're tired of being one-shot by all the crazy anima powers we collect along the way. I am interested to see what kind of monster this will be and how powerful they end up being, and whether that's going to cause a lot of problems for players. And the last one on this list is Tricks and Traps. Traps deal massively increased damage and are more commonly found. You know, just in case you wanted to die to more traps in your Torghast runs, this Torment has got your back. There is one extra effect that was datamined alongside these, but we're not too sure if it's a Torment or something else. It's called Shoplifter. Brokers are hostile, defeat them for extra rewards. I hope this is a Torment, because this is like the only cool or interesting one among the list. Killing Brokers changes up how Torghast works. It gives you an option to do something differently, and if the Brokers are at least a little difficult to take down, it's kind of like adding in a mini-boss, especially if the rewards are worth it. Can you imagine killing a broker and 6 to 10 anima orbs just farting out onto the floor? That would be amazing and you would look forward to this torment coming back around. But yeah, that's our current list of torments for the new Torgas system. Remember, you can have up to 5 of these active at the same time, so those runs are definitely going to hurt quite a bit. If you invest in the talent system with your tower knowledge, you can reduce the number of active torments on any given layer, so that's going to be something to look out for. And that's all of the big updates coming to Torghast in patch 9.1 from what we can see so far on the PTR. As more things are updated, new things are added in, refined and polished, I'll be sure to update you on the progress of the system. With everything included, I think Torghast is one step closer to being a fantastic system and something you can run for fun. 
Yes, I said it, Torghast could end up being something to do for fun in patch 9.1 with all of these changes, but there are still problems here and there. I don't think torments are altogether necessary, and if they wanted to include some negative effects, at least be creative about it. Some of these torments sound like they came from the sole point of view of how can we slow down and annoy the players at the same time. I don't think that's a great way to look at game design. Hopefully some of the torments are removed or changed by the time this goes live, but the rest of these updates are definitely moving Torghast in the right direction. One thing that I think Torghast is still missing in my opinion though is a set of cosmetics. We have tower knowledge now, so repeat runs aren't worthless, but they're still not really rewarding either. Cosmetics to collect from Torghast runs would encourage players to actually invest some time in the system outside of farming soul cinders, and I hope there will be cosmetic rewards and achievements tied to 4 gem and 5 gem scores for different layers. That is such an easy way to encourage players to master the Tower of Torghast and increase their score with every run they do, but I'm not sure if anything has been included in the PTR so far. Now as a final note here, I know hindsight is always 2020, but I really wonder what the community reaction would have been if patch 9.1's Torghast was the version the game launched with. Really curious to see how people would have reacted. Either way, I think it's in a much better place now, even if there are still quite a few things that need to be worked on. But that's it for this video. What do you think of the changes to Torghast from what you've seen so far? Is there anything that stands out as awesome and amazing? Or is there anything that sounds awful or uninteresting? Which part of the new Torghast are you most excited for in patch 9.1? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to everyone who subscribed on Twitch. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.